Hi everyone, I'm with JT Singh uh, here today, who's the key account manager at Ascendex. Um, and Ascendex are a, a, a communications company um, really specializing in some of the, 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 the collections and DCA space, and they've been doing a lot of work recently. Um, so, so JC, thanks for making the time with me today. Um, uh, it's, it'd be great to chat, it's great to chat with you. Um, so I suppose I wanted to start off, and we were chatting a little bit before, about some of the changes we've seen over lockdown. Um, what are some of the things that you've seen in terms of your client base and some of the feedback you've had? Um, okay, yeah, so firstly, hi, Chris. Um, the Looking at the space that we predominantly work in, the UK collection, the recovery section, with banking, with in-house collections, that sort of stuff, um, the biggest change we've seen since probably April is the amount of debt being sold mm -hmm. um, on the UK, into the UK markets. Naturally, that's declined. Um, mm -hmm. And then that's had a knock-on effect to CNR, so the collections and recoveries action being paused as well, which is aligned very much to payment holidays that are in the marketplace. So we're seeing that correlation between the consumers that are, ha are requesting the mortgage, the car finance, the credit card payment holidays, and then the collections payment plans are also being frozen mm. aligned to that as well, which has had a knock-on effect on cash revenues. Yeah, and, and so how did you see it in terms of like, I suppose, your products and how you and how you how have you helped clients react to that um so obviously you know there's been there's been a decline in activity but some of the things that that i we've definitely talked about have been around you know migration to digital and those things has been sort of like a bit of a bit of a replacement to try and keep some of those things going you see is, some of that? Yeah. yeah yeah so within sort of different verticals i mean within our lending sort of vertical we've seen an increase in activity mm. um the guys are looking at opportunities to get more customers on the book mm. and that's i understand that within the collections the core collections arm we're seeing two different distinct paths here one where the collections of action have actually increased significantly mm. in the sense that the sincerity and the empathy in the message has been tailored to the customer whereas it might have been a bit more generic previously the other side is a complete freeze where they're playing on these probably the cautious side of say nothing um, until we know what we can do. But we are seeing two ends of that spectrum at the minute. Uh, so we're now getting towards the end of the payment holidays and sort of I mean, that's that's we're getting towards the end of that. Have you seen it? Have you seen the profile of it change since the start? And you know, certainly you know, a lot of the things that 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 you know that have been been talked about have been sort of like just that, you know, just a basic capacity to get out and talk to people and you know so you can use messaging to try and do that. But I mean has it changed as it's gone through over really over the last six months? And sort of how does it how is it different today than it was right at the start? Uh, really good. That's a really good point because one of the key things we're seeing with lenders is they had to honor a payment holiday because mm. the customer requested it. Very little criteria in terms of the due diligence or the pre-qualifying questions uh, because it was a mandatory you're allowed to have it people were able to to apply for these as and when they see fit now one of the, the big things that we're seeing from the tier two banks is because that that pre-qualifying question wasn't done asking the question of what are you going to do in three or six months to fill that shortfall or to get yourself back on track um that wasn't done oh. which has meant that people are that are susceptible, susceptible for a you know, falling into a debt cycle are very much going to be down that path. Equally, um, from the lender's point of view, um, these guys have to be able to lend out with their mortgages, their cards, their finance, whatever it might be, and see no cash injection back into the business or even cash revenue lines till February, March next year. So potentially 12 months from when this pandemic started, mm. we're seeing no return on any of their sort of investments that they're making, which means that cash in the bank is king at the minute for a lot of these mm. brands. But from the from the consumer's point of view, um, I mean, channels used all your conventional stuff, WhatsApp, SMS, iMessage, that sort of stuff. Um, but we are seeing a lot of portals and Ascendix has been um, quite heavily demanded on to, to generate these portals for customers, bespoke COVID mm. ones are looking at, have you been impacted? Why, what can we do to help? And then essentially creating a new segment of customer. So previously you'd have your your vulnerable ones, and then your you can't pay, won't pay, that sort of stuff. Now you have a, a self-diagnosed vulnerability, which wasn't on anyone's sort of map previously. It wasn't a a, a path that you would go down on a context. Mm. That's just created this new 
unknown of how do you service that? How do you contact that person? What's the best thing to do for them? Because one of the biggest examples that I had was people that were you know, bringing in, let's just say five grand a month and their outgoings were 3000 pounds. Suddenly when they've gone on to furlough, whereas previously they were in the black, they oh, were making yeah. money. Yeah. Now they're, they're losing money month on month. So to ask that question of what are you going to do to, to bridge that shortfall, it simply wasn't done, which means you've got very successful people that were doing quite well, hitting you know levels of anxiety or this vulnerability that they don't really know how to get out of. And it's almost like uh, some of the other conversations we've been having is almost like there's, there's this uh, it's like missing piece of information that now we have to capture, which is you know so so I'm now self declaring as being uh, vulnerable or I'm you know potentially potentially vulnerable, but there's there's like missing piece of information that probably wasn't there before, which is now COVID requires us to try and get hold of, which is well what's happened you know so you, everything was fine before now something's changed what are the details around that, and that it seems like there's almost like an information gap uh, as much as anything. There is, there certainly is. Um, and I mean, you can you can attempt to bridge that gap now, but then the thing is you've got the constant regulatory changes around this. So you had the first, second and third payment holidays, and then you're going to open it up to other schemes. Right. So in terms of you can create something on the fly as a knee jerk reaction to cater for that customer, but then you have to be constantly on the ball to look at what is the next scheme that's coming out, whether right. it's another job retention scheme or something that's going to then either further put someone down the spiral or potentially help them. And if it's going to help them, how do you address the shortfall that they're in in a collections world? How do you say, well, what is it you can afford to do realistically? But you can't then do your conventional 6, 12, 18 month plan. It has to be mm. literally a month by month payment plan. And, and, and it very much feels like we're in a, a much more flexible world. Um, and the requirement around flexibility. I mean, what's what's your view on the future in terms of how that's going to how it's going to change? I mean, we're sort of reaching the end of the payment holidays. You know, C bills, BBLS has also been talked about. Um, you know, and what? How do you think it? What are going to be the key requirements we're going to need going forward? So, you, suppose you want that decision engine from a from a brand point of view mm. that can cater for different types of customers. So that linear strategy that a lot of people would typically implement where you are customer A, B, C or D and you go down that direct path. That's kind of rubbed out now. Mm. Um, we're seeing we're, we're very fortunate in this index that we, we see 85, 90 percent of this sector. So we have a very broad view of what everyone's doing, what the different ROIs are and what basically works in that moment in time. So we can then kind of see from your what you're doing now, what the return is going to be off the back of that. Um, mm. So, I mean, in short, there's no there's no perfect answer for it because mm. every single person's got their own unique circumstances from a brand or a consumer point of view. But we, we do think that you need to be extremely dynamic in what your approach is. So if you put yourself in the shoes of that customer, they're probably in a quite a bad place financially, emotionally. There's a lot that goes around, you know, supporting families and stuff, which they might not be able to do. So and then you've got the risk of jobs at the end mm. of October as well. Um, and then the happiest time of the year, Christmas, where it probably might not be the happiest time of the year this time around. Yeah. So how do you support that customer? And the best way is put yourself in their shoes. What's going to work? Something that's non-intrusive, that doesn't ask 101 questions, that gets straight to the point and just allows them to live their life and mm. be in the best possible place they can be. Send a text, send in, you know, the channel that works, a WhatsApp or a text, for example, with a link that just goes to a short three page solution, a micro journey. It just gathers what you need and solves their problem. Mm. Um, what you don't want to do is 101 questions or the infinite pages scrolling through and the cu customers are dropping off out of just this isn't the experience I expected. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think? Do you think we've seen a sea change in terms of digital interaction uh, as much through, uh, through the COVID lockdown? Yes. So we've done um, only last week a lot of work on this and we released mm. a huge paper around the different expectations of customers. So in short, frustration and anxiety levels are sky high. Mm. Um, the expectation of engagement definitely changed. So it just needs to be clean, concise, easy and straight to the point. Um, most people just want answers. So whether it's a financial one, a resolution that the brand has, 
essentially the, the brand is caring for that that customer mm. and they're not just a number so it's quite obvious when you mail merge or you merge in a name or something so just just really going beyond the due to these unprecedented times our wait time will be just mm. really honing down on it's been six months we get it we've been stung you've been stung let's just resolve this together when can we get some time to go to do that so showing genuine true empathy i think is really really important at the moment mm. It's, it's interesting. It's interesting in terms of like so you talk a bit about there's you know a sea change in terms of digital adoption, but it could also be a sea change in terms of uh, almost like bespoke customization as well. Which so you're going down to the, almost like the individual customer level, and the more you can customize it, the the better the reactions you seem to be having. Essentially, what you want is whether it's an automation or you know elements of machine learning or a bot or whatever, but it needs to be as if you are talking to that a person. Mm. This, your case manager, your 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 one-to-one relationship, um, and kind of your get out of jail card. You talk to that person, and they will help you out of this problem. Um, we did a we did a piece. I mentioned we did a study, and there was one that uh, mentioned that in terms of digital channel use, digital as a whole, seventy-five percent of people that didn't previously use them, that have been forced to use them with banks closing, with their conventional ways of engaging now now cut. Um, they're now going to continue using them. Mm. So in terms of the expectation of customers, digital is is properly here to say, uh, to say. Now, absolutely everyone says that digital is a buzzword. You know, everyone's got it on a roadmap in any any business. You name it, digital. We need to install a digital strategy and stuff. Um, in terms of what that is, it's simply what matters to your business. Whether it's web chat and bots, whether it's SMS due to reach, whether it's email because your CRM, you literally your CRM can't handle anything other than that channel. Um, but whatever your end user engages on is what your roadmap should be focused on. So mm. apps are great, um, providing you're in the right world for them. So I'll take banking, for example. There's a lot of sort of um, online banks at the minute that have got really good apps, help you manage your money, pie charts of your spend, that sort of stuff. And they do a really great job. Me as a consumer, I have a financial vested interest in that. My money's held there, and I want to see how you can save it from pence or how much do I spend on coffee or whatever. In the same world, that customer is born into the app world. They're born into that brand when they acquire the finance, whatever it might have been. But then when they fall into a collections and recovery space, they don't necessarily want to engage with a debt purchaser or a DCA that their, their debt was outsourced with because mm-hmm. they don't have an affiliation with them have it with these guys these guys are too fixed on board nice and digital download it live and breathe my life these guys they're not going to download their app because they don't know who they are they probably don't want anything to do with them and they want to talk to these guys again so having a app like experience is just as important as having an app something that can trigger that that same sort of ui that the customers are accustomed to because if you go down the route of pen and paper and sending post out the door, it just doesn't, I know it has a, a need and it has to be done, but it's so laborious in terms of the audit trail and the reconciliation of what someone might be doing or saying or received or sent back. I think having a, a proper digital way of two-way interaction, that's that's going to be where you strip out your cost to service and you manage your customer's expectation properly. So, so that's very interesting. So do you see almost like an extension of, um, uh, you know, say, let's say take the banking world, um, you know, an extension of BPO, so like white label, white label outsourcing using new apps and those kind of things, which um, which you can which you which you can then implement quickly, um, an extension of BPO before you get uh, in terms of time frame before you get to the DCA the DC uh, the DCA or the or the debt purchase world. So it's almost like that that outsourced in-house type collections window will get extended because customers want to have that relationship with the bank still so it'll still be white labeled as the bank do you think Absolutely. the time frame would extend yeah so i mean we see like the point of outsourcing from internal brands out to dcas and debt purchasers um and we always know which one's going to collect on best because those that are outsourced on day 30 that's great you know the dcas and they're going to make a lot of money off that equally those that do it on day 180 you you've chipping away at it so your activity between going into arrears to outsourcing 
that's your window where you have your retention. The thing mm. you've spent the most money on in a very competitive market where you've done all your marketing spend, you've done everything to win back customers, to retain them, to lend more to people that are paid down, whatever it might be, you're, you're simply going to lose that entire investment if you outsource too soon. Mm. So having your internal white label solution, your internal BPO operation or whatever you want to call it, in-house collections for sure, that a, it maintains that your brand and reputation is still relayed on in all your comm channels. And B, you retain control of that customer. You can still say after your conversation with John who onboarded you, we've seen that you know, you've know you not made your business. How is it we can help you? And you create that one-to-one -one affiliation. And then suddenly you don't have a customer that's saying, who is this other brand that's asking for the money that I owed here? It's all within that one bubble. Mm. Oh, fascinating. So you Obviously, Sendex works across multiple sectors and you talk about banks. I know you work through the through the, the debt collection industry as well. Um, how do you characterize the differences in terms of investment or difference in terms of approach? I mean, has there been a difference of approach between let's just take back banks at one end of the, the spectrum and let's say take, take debt purchases at the other? Um, are you, how would you characterize the differences between the different the different sort of market sectors? So we've seen a lot of um, projects sort of spun up really quickly mm. and they're still evolving month on month. And then we've seen equally loads of stock investments where the investment case has been has gone up to the financial directors or the CFOs and it simply isn't there. The ROI is not going to exist. So whereas previously it was we've got two years to do this thing, this digital thing, this portal, this whatever it might be. Um, you've now got three months. And if the ROI isn't there, then you need to essentially outsource that that piece of work. So hence why we're so busy at the minute, because a lot of people want to retain their IPs. They want to build in house so that everything fits together nicely and it works. Um, but equally, there are experts in the market that you can outsource to. Mm -hmm. And those guys, it, they live and breathe that, that piece of work. They can bring you the knowledge of it, like a very broad sector view where you can mm -hmm. see what works and what little UI elements sort of make a big difference. So we've seen a lot of stock investments in, of an internal work and outsourcing out to the relevant experts in that in that field mm. um, as long as there is that strong roi that you can justify the spend um because cash is king and i will reiterate that point as long as you can justify if we spend the 50 grand we will get 80 grand back in month two or whatever um but you do get a lot of people that support you on those business cases and there's investment packs as well yeah so I think standing in front of a board or a, a, you know the boardroom with a PowerPoint or a graph, it's good, it's fine, it does the job and it did the job for years. But I think now just a black and white headline figure, if you do this, you will get this. Mm. And then having the, the drill down detail behind that, it, it just adds to confidence and commitment in getting these things mm. done. So, so it sounds like there's investment, no matter which, which market, part of the market you're in, be it the banks or be it the the debt purchases or anything in between. Um, I mean, investment's been there. I mean, it's it's really sounds like it's pretty much even across the across all of the market. Um, yeah. Saying that, we've had um, a lot of projects that have been expedited, and the financial side of it isn't as important as relaying that message on. So whereas previously we would have, it would have been a six month piece of work to do whatever the project was, the portal with the multi channel comms quite typically. Um, that's now become three months and there is a cash injection to bring that forward because the other option is you you recruit people right. and your call center gets bigger when your call center isn't there so getting bigger is really hard um training onboarding when you're not in a office environment and using conventional fte resource that that whole concept of getting new people into that channel is extremely hard those that have been doing it for years, it's, it's very easy. You can set them up at home and that sort of stuff. But the governance and the out the overhead on, on FT resources is dead expensive. So I think at the minute, the cost element has been kind of shelved and it's just a, we need to get and mm. how do we do it best? So we it's, it's great for brands like ourselves um, mm. because it, it brings things forward. But equally, it, it highlights the need that it's not always about the money. The customer yeah. is your money. Keep your customer and you'll make money. So you need to then focus on the customer 
more yeah. than your just your balance sheet. Yeah, and the customer is the revenue stream, right? So exactly, it's, it's exactly right. So, so it looks pretty much like we're all going back into into lockdown again uh, in the UK. Um, I mean, bit by bit, it seems to be sort of you know crawling across the different parts of the UK at different stages at different speeds. What's yeah. your what's your view on that in terms of how do we how should we think about that and how should we react to it given what happened before? Um, so purely from a a work point of view um react positively there's nothing anybody can influence or do about this it's it's forced upon us so the best thing you can do is just roll your sleeves up and get stuck in mm. uh, from the sales point of view you know that you've got customers that need your support and need your help um, mm. they want some guidance they want a bit of consultancy around what works what doesn't so that you can support their business which in turn helps our business so from a sales point of view absolutely talk to everybody, understand what's going off, and don't just go straight into work. These are mm. people at the end of the phone. Have mm. a bit of, you know, if you were to meet them in the pub, you wouldn't just go straight into mm. what it is. You you talk and you you spend time investing in your in your in your customer base. Mm. Um and that goes from the brands that we work with on their customers. They don't have the the usual script of you've missed your payment, how do you want to pay? What's next? It's more of a look, we get it. We're in the same boat as you. This is a really tough, really, really tough climate that we're in. So what's your situation? What's going off with you? How can we help you? Mm. Do you need extra support through debt management companies, that sort of stuff? Or just really honing down on why is it you cannot pay us? Because equally, you've got to balance empathy and the whole pandemic with we still need to make money and we still need to maintain a revenue line so that we don't fall into the debt cycle ourselves and we're mm. actually keeping our business afloat. So I think it's there's a responsibility on everyone to just um I'll say step up, it sounds harsh, but just to step up and really understand if you were to put yourself in that person's shoes, is it the right action? Mm. And that's normally when you get the best result. If you would do it to yourself, then it's normally a good thing. And I do think one of the nice things about lockdown has been, um, I mean, it's been a very tough situation. It's been a tough situation for many people. But one of the things it has done is it made us all a little bit more human, um, just, just just to your point. And I think it's just like it's, you know, how to use that sort of human interaction. We are all human beings and use that to, to interact with people and add value to them as well. I think that's the, I think, I think that's 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 really, really been one of the positive things, I think, that's, that's, that's kind of come out. I think it's certainly emphasised, at least anyway. It is. You're using digital channels extensively now. I mean, if you look at any of the graphs around usage in the last six months, it's just shot up, irrespective mm. of the channels that it might be. Um, so you're using a faceless, automated system, and you've got to make it really human. Mm. So how do you do it? That's, mm. that's that's kind of how everyone's looking at what's the best way of doing this. Yeah. Um, one of the things that work we keep saying is everything we do today will determine what we're worth tomorrow. So yeah. Policing those messages, making sure they've got the right tone, making sure they look after people. They're not just drilling down on, do you want to borrow more? Or do you want to pay us now? All that sort of stuff. So really being sympathetic to people's personal circumstances. Mm. Um, I mean, as I mentioned to you, I've been working from home for six months and I've managed to adapt to it quite quickly. Um, but equally, I've managed to never miss a meal with my family. Mm. That's never happened before. Yeah, uh, I've seen my little daughter grow. I've seen her do a, a crawl into steps to walk in. So there is positives to take out of this. But I'm in a family environment where, yes, it's noisy and busy and you balance it with work. But there are those that will be on their own in flats mm. that have very little interaction with people. There's no access to a communal gardens or anything like that. So That's you've good. got to understand that. Make sure your message, whatever your message is on whatever platform it's on, it tailors to that spectrum of people. It, it addresses the isolation factor and what that spiral can result in. But mm. it also addresses those that are probably overly busy and are overwhelmed with kids screaming and Nerf bullets hitting you in the head and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so when, we, when we first went into lockdown, 
um, you know, we we've almost like we we almost we everything stopped. Uh, you know, we went into uh, you know went into this sort of like emergency contingency mode, and I think there's a it feels almost like there's a bit of an expectation of like well we'll get through it and then we'll come out of it. Um, is it sort of we go back into new lockdown potentially a second wave? Uh, I think there's a bit of a realization around well maybe this is it and it's going to be it for a longer time. Um, yes. I mean, are you do, do you kind of feel that? And you got any thoughts around? how people should best sort of, sort of deal with that in some ways because it is it's tough mentally as well as uh, as well as you know tough from a tough from a business process point of view and for customers as well Any it is and i think if you're not as affected mentally because i think everybody will be right um to different degrees but if you're not if it's not as prevalent then you very much focus on your business your job your mm. keeping things moving um but you can't forget those that are hit with it. So mm. I think the biggest thing I've done, um, I go through my phone, I just reach out to everyone once a week, you know, in, in different cycles, just haven't texted that person in probably six months. Mm. How's it going? Uh, yeah. A quick WhatsApp call or a quick video call on whatever platform. What's going off? How are you doing? Do you need anything? That sort of stuff. Yeah. So just, just, you might be the only person that person speaks to for a week. Yeah. So just be aware that if you always think that that call makes a big difference, you'll do more of it and it will just help you connect to people, help you talk to people. I wouldn't get caught up in the social media side of things, which I differentiate very much from multi-channel messaging and stuff. The social media side can probably tip you over in, mm, in a yeah. good climate or tip you over where people are like, you know, no one ever shows themselves crying or reaching out for help. Yeah. And you have to show the Ferraris and the golds, right? So you aspire towards that, but you don't think people are feeling what you're feeling because it's never it's never seen. So, and, and it's another thing around. You see a lot of um, the younger generation at the minute are hitting really bad financial hardship. Mm. Their lives. Um, I've got I've got cousins that are doing GCSEs. They've basically lost a year. They. Yeah, it's been really tough. You know, they've they've had the worst experience. Everything they prepared for has kind of been not written off, but it's postponed for a bit. So in terms of financial maturity um, and just money matters as a, as, a, as a broader topic, they're not exposed to it. Mm. They haven't had a job when they should have had one. They haven't had the opportunity to apply for a mortgage because they can't save. And the, the knock-on effect that has, I think losing a year at the age of 16 probably has a five-year impact about the age of 40 because you mm. miss out a lot of exposure so the second wave the third wave however many we have they're going to keep it's going to be there if it happens mm. we just have to follow the rules collectively um follow the rules there's no point 95 percent of the people downloading that nhs app keeping away from each other and then five percent having a crazy party at the end of the street it just it mm. defies the point it's a mm. and it's a shame for those that have been on their own isolating who are shielding even um you've just reset their entire investment it's, it's not right so i think we need to be mature and sensitive to financial emotional and mental impact that this has had just be very aware everything equals a perception um, and i say it at work a lot you can have the worst day and someone can send you a two-line email mm. how you read that is up to you mm. you can read it in pure anger and rage um, and it's very hard to then fire something back when you're not in the office and you're just kind of remote working equally you can just take a step back and say well maybe they're just as busy as me maybe mm. they simply don't have time to explain the whole thing they just want to get straight to the point mm. so pinch yourself everything with mm. a pinch yourself at the minute yeah yeah i think it's really good advice um I think it's been, I mean, it's been a, you know, I think it's, it's been a real sort of like massive change that's happened with all of lockdown. Um, and, I, and I do think, you know, we were expecting it to sort of finish relatively, get through it, I suppose, in six months, at least. And that's some of the early expectations. But you just wonder now if, a, you know, it, it isn't going to change. And do we, we just need to now process re-engineer things. So how do we look after the people who are more vulnerable? How do we look after the, you know, that, that whole connection with people? And do, do we actually need to change the way we do things um, over the longer term, rather than it just being, let's just let's just get through this period and then we'll be back to the way it was. It's it's now a it's now almost like a process re-engineering type uh, discussion. 
It is. And the thing is, I mean, there's like this popular saying that you're only over five connections away to knowing everyone in the world. Mm. Well, I can reach out to everyone in my phone, but that's such a micro impact. It doesn't really mm. break much because if that person doesn't relay that message on to somebody else, it kind of just stops that cycle. Mm. I think, yes, you need to look after people, but I really think we need to look after our businesses because mm. they're the ones that have the macro impact. They're able to reach out to the masses very easily. Keeping them sustained and trading is really important because that stops future financial crashes. That stops mm. future mental decline. Um, mm. And the cost of, you know, mental well-being, it's so expensive mm. because it's not seen and the impacts normally is quite, you're quite far down the line before it's, it's quite prevalent that there's something wrong. Mm. And you could be someone, you could be on a, a CEO of a, of a huge business mm. that's feeling it and suddenly when you you go it leaves a void and then that kind of creates a bit of a domino effect mm. at the bottom if you're if you're a call center agent uh, by you leaving you're not servicing 20 30 calls that day yeah and those yeah. people have done an impact so i think yes reach out to everyone in your phone reach out to people that you don't normally talk to do it with a smile embrace the fact that you're talking to somebody but the brand you work for 110 percent you've got to back it you've got to put the hours in you've got to make it work because every single one of the brands that that we've we've ever talked to they have a huge reach um, mm -hmm. and that's where the impact really is made yeah like a dramatic i mean that's that's a responsibility for us as an industry the fact you can sort of have a, a tremendous positive impact just because of the reach of it right as well that's a yeah. really good point. Well, JT, thanks very much for, for, for the conversation. Uh, uh, yeah, fascinating as always. Uh, great to chat to you uh, and very much appreciated. So we'll, we'll chat soon. Thanks very much. No problem. Anytime. Okay. Cheers.